you know a lot with stefano but alia and yeah i know uh, i know so i'm really happy that we at least got to talk so and um, thank you it's and, a pleasure for me yeah m- me too and uh <laughs> I-, I just want to ask you first I-, I did this talk the other day with ivan arset yeah uh, and you know ah, okay you-, you guys play together a lot and um also you did yeah, Lost, we play- Lost yeah we play a lot together yeah and uh, I wanted to ask you, yes. when, did you, when did you guys meet? Like, how did this story with Ivan happen, actually? Um, I met uh, Ivan the first time in Rome. He was playing with uh, Daffer Youssef and Paolo Fresu. And uh, I was com- completely impressed. I, mean, I never saw him before. So uh, just at the end of the concert, I said, wow, I love these guys. <laughs> he was doing a fantastic texture and sounds and stuff. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I, I, I asked to Paolo to, to, to have the, his uh, contact and then I called him. It was like maybe 10 years ago, something like that. Oh, wow. And, and then, uh, so he's a sort of an uh, of angel. So he's a really nice, nice person, really. Yeah. So you just keep in contact and you say, yeah, let's, let's meet us. So I just start like that. And we, we play also with Stefano for a short period. Uh, we did also a, a live recording uh, with a painter in uh, Brescia, oh, wow. and, uh, and and then uh, we 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 start playing a duo for uh, like five six years, oh. and then uh, Manfred proposed us to doing a record, but he he asked uh, the idea to invite another person signing the record. So we just thinking about Gianluca Petrella, yeah. and uh, so that's why the the trio come out and we are trying to to do the new one now so we are working oh really oh wow yeah just start uh, some days ago we met him here in paris uh, we rehearsed uh, some days and so i hope ne- beginning next year we're gonna oh, record wow. the new one that's beautiful yeah that's it <laughs> how, how did you decide for uh Gianluca? i mean i know you probably played with him i but... think uh, actually uh, it was a, a Manfred decision at the beginning. I mean, he asked us if we were interested to, to have a, a guest and he proposed Gianluca. Okay. And I say, yes, of course, because um, I mean, I play with Gianluca in other situations. So I, I know him very well and he's, he's a great musician. Yeah, yeah. He's a great improviser. So it was, was really easy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I watched you, there, there's on YouTube uh, a concert you guys did like end of last year right before the lockdown in the Rome. Yeah, and it's, it was just a week before. Yeah, it and it's so nice week. to see you guys playing live because it's like, you know, you and uh, Ivan on electronics and yeah. all, all this stuff that you're doing. And then when you listen to the record, Lost River, there's no visual, but to see you visual, it's so beautiful. But I wanted to ask you, like, how did you guys prepare for the record for Lost River? Because it's a lot of improvisation also and like how what was the concept behind the record how did you guys put it together yeah uh actually um with the i did we really work with uh we just start from one really from one sound one idea uh we use both a lot of electronics so we just starting with a rhythmic idea or a texture and then we start to develop that. So we keep a really open the field of improvisation. Um, uh, the, the, I think the, the Gianluca um, figure in this project is, is important because it's the more uh, free voice on top of the project. So with, in, in this case, uh, uh, with the Ivy, we just create a sort of, uh, you know, the texture behind yeah. so it can it can really move on on it and it's uh that's why i i i support that uh manfred idea because i think it's a nice voice uh, yeah. but when we play in a duo 
is completely different because we just you know use some different role. So sometimes some solist with you know uh, electronic stuff or mm -hmm. something. Sometimes it is a solist, so it's a different approach. But, but the record uh, we just start to uh, to improvise. Uh, we keep uh, some tune completely improvised in the record. You will see, I think, uh, fifty percent of the music oh. is completely improvised. And then uh, on the other side, we have uh, like uh, you know that simple idea to use a sort of rhythm pattern or a texture and something. And but you know it's very improvised. So when we play, uh, we just you know come up on stage and we don't use a. a songs or stuff we just we just playing and yeah i, I really like the situation yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean i love improvisation so much as well as as well as composition but how do you how do you decide where to go when you're improvising that you make it interesting especially with you you know you can get with electronics you can get very quickly into this uh your own zone of almost nothing, but you, you when I listen to you and Ivan, you are constantly reacting to each other. You're not serving the electronics. Yeah. Yeah. You're actually playing music, you know? How did you develop this through time? I I, I mean, it's uh, from my side, it's a long time that I'm, I'm, I'm working with electronics. And uh, what I'm trying to do is just to think uh, about my electronic, like an extension of my sound. So that's why, more and more I try to don't look for example when I have all my table with electronics I just don't look at the table I just, I just push and I, I know exactly what it is so I can react I, I mean I can try to react fast yeah, yeah. because uh, that I for me it should be electronic it, it should be uh, uh, at, at, on the same level of the acoustic instrument from yeah. the idea so what I'm trying to do is just to uh, found a, a global sound that it's big it's made by acoustic and electronic yeah. stuff yeah so i can really play and just push one button and i know how this react so that's a little bit my process and the same thing that more or less i've been did i mean just i will use a is a source from acoustic sound and then start to manipulate it you know all the stuff so it's changing a little bit the conception you know to play you know, yeah conventional way because sometimes you have just one hand and then you have you know to, to touch pedal or stuff with your other hands free so it's, yeah. it's a little bit a new a different concept yeah but it's interesting i would said the same thing like oh. for him the electronics are as part of that you know he exactly knows what to do that it's sure that he serves the improvisation and the music that it's not like ah oh, what now and you know yeah yeah that's, that's the problem important. with the electronics you know because many times you see people that mm, they just push but then you know something strange you know because they don't know their reaction yeah. of, uh, and then i use a lot of uh uh can you say random stuff so i use a lot of random effects and uh, okay. i can uh, interact with the machine mm, so that's yeah. what i really like because uh, it's part really of the in improvisational you know uh, um, road yeah. so you can play and the machine answers sometimes in certain i mean you have some parameter so you know more or less where you are where we are going but uh it's i think it's very stimulated yeah you know, I, I like that can, yeah, yeah. yeah i like that with the delay you know i have a boss dd7 and then you you, oh, know, yeah. you, you play something and you like kind of the delay time you push it and then it, cr it creates this, I don't know, odd 17, eight structure or something like, it's like, what, what is this? And then, you know, it's so, and the next time it will be like a nine or 11 or four. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's, that, that, that's, I think it's very, you know, stimulated. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice. And uh, when did you start discovering the electronics? Like uh, already like uh, in the late eighties or nineties or like later? No, no, I was like 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. No, not that, that much. I mean, I started, yeah, I think it was 11 years ago. Oh. And it was strange because uh, I started and I really, for me, it was like a nightmare because I didn't understand nothing at all. So I just call everybody and say, hey, how does this work? <laughs> and then little by little, I, uh, you know, 
I don't know. Oh, I mean, I'm not right. an electronic. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was I was really always uh, really interesting in the sound material more than you know composition or uh, you know. So I was really also, also when I was playing acoustic, I just trying to 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 search uh, new sound, uh, new stuff. Uh, so I was really into this kind of uh, thinking. That's why I I I I, I think that the, uh, probably. I was really blessed about the a concert that I I was living I was living in Rome at the time mm -hmm. and uh, I I went to see a uh, Caroline Sokhausen uh, mm -hmm. opera wow. Wow. In, in the auditorium and he was still alive it was you know on the mixing console just doing wow yeah. and I it was just for electronics I mean it was just tape and I really well, I say wow it's a fantastic world is this one so you know little by little I start to work from the first little pedal then i change it by the computer and that was the nightmare for different yeah, years <laughs> and uh, and now uh, i'm i'm really uh divided because I, i'm using uh, also modular stuff not that much you know small things but uh i'm you know i have this uh, uh desire to come back to the pedal but you know th my choice to use a computer because it's very easy to travel. Yeah, yeah, that. that's yeah. That that's that's why you know because you just put your computer, your sound card, and controller in your bag, in you know, so then you can take a plane, you can do everything you want yeah. with the pedal. Plus, I have symbols and stuff, so it's good. yeah, it's way easier. With yeah, yeah, and all the sounds are in there now, also. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. In a way, it's. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm also thinking about that already for a long time. You know, I have still pedals, analog and everything. I'm like, man, you know, then it's like. Uh, yeah, it's, it's changing life. <laughs> yeah, it does. So, but yeah, maybe next next step. But next uh, step. Uh, I wanted to ask you about, uh, just to return to Lost River, uh, and you men mentioned uh, Manfred had the idea for Gianluca. And uh, uh, how did your... How is it like for you as a drummer? You know, like ECM Records has an amazing heritage of drummers. Like, you, you know, I listen to Nimbus on Lost River and I hear like this Jon Christensen when you go on the right vibe I heard. I don't know, you know, that's yes. the sound. I, 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 really yeah. beautiful. And, uh, but it's a strong drum heritage on the label. And uh, how, how was it for you working with Manfred? How much of a role does he play? within the production of an album you guys do or will do or do? Uh, uh, actually, uh, on, on this record, uh, I, I, I had the chance to work with Manfred on some different records, yeah, but times. on this one special, because it was a little bit my, uh, uh, my and, and also from, uh, from Ivan, it was yeah. our record, really. And uh, I was very, very, very happy because uh, Manfred was there for all the session and the mix oh. and uh, it was really helpful because uh, I, I remember actually in one song it was completely improvised and uh, so we came back to the control room to listen back and uh, Mafri just say two or three things very simple like you know maybe it's better you wait to come in maybe it's better you, you do this look at the dynamics and uh, actually, we did a, another track again, and it was, you know, mm. we, did, we did, so it was in the record. And uh, I think uh, uh, Manfred is, I mean, from my point of view, is uh, one of the great, or yeah. the great producer we still have today, because he's really have a great ear, and uh, he, he really knows, he really knows music and his job, so. It's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a gift to work with a, a person like him. But uh, at the same time, uh, it was also uh, very um, interested of where we were thinking. Like uh, we, we finished to recording a track, we get back to the control room and first thing Manfred asked was, uh, so guys, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And then we start to discuss, you know, and that's a nice approach to, you know, to, to work together, really. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is. Yeah, especially the, your music that you, you do, it fits so nicely also with the tradition of ECM, you know, this openness and yeah, yeah. landscapish textural music. It's, you know, it's beautiful. So to put on a record, yeah. it's like, oh, zen like. <laughs> yeah. But uh, how, uh, I wanted to ask you, like, you were born in Torino, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. And how, how important was. Uh, the ECM tradition or any like jazz tradition what were the first jazz guys because you know mostly when I do these uh, talks you know I, I've spoken with so many New York musicians and I know really well the tradition in New York how it developed and I played with really many Italian musicians but we never spoken about the Italian scene let's say in the mid 80s how was it like for you when you started going into the jazz scene in these beginnings how was that like for you? Uh, well, I start. Um, my brother was playing. Was my big brother was playing at the time, and uh, so I have a collection of jazz vinyl. You know, like you know, classic stuff like Coltrane, Miles Davis, blah blah. And uh, I think uh, I I get into ECM for the first time. Uh, uh, because I, a friend of mine showed me a record of uh, Nana Vasconcelos with mm. uh, Egberto Gismonti. Oh, yeah. Mm. So uh, I fall in completely love with Nana. Uh, and, um, and I think I, that was the, the first record that I start to, to listen from ECM. Yeah. Then, of course, Kid Jarrett was, you know, was, you know, yeah. the standard tree was just come out. So... And from that, I start to, 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 to listen to a, a lot of ECM, uh, ECM music. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did, like, did, you, did you like, the, you, you mentioned, uh, let's say, Kijar, did you also like go then, you know, did you have a period of diving into Jack Dijonet or like all these guys or Elvin? Ah, or okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't answer the question. Uh, no, actually, it was like that. Uh, my first uh, res research was about the, the all the improvisation music in Europe. So I started to listen to Tony Oxley, oh, Anne okay. Benning, you know, all this kind of area. That yeah. was for many years my, uh, you know, <laughs> my yeah. direction. Yeah, yeah. Really getting in love with all of this work uh, from improvisation music. Mostly European than American. I mean, I was listening more, you know, the Mission Bell, Mission Bengelberg stuff, Bengelberg, or, yeah. or Emma Parker, blah blah. Uh, of course, I was listening to Ornette, uh, you know, the yeah, American yeah, guys. Sure. But I was really in, into this kind of uh, music. It was really interesting in that. So that was the the, the real beginning. Then uh, uh, I start, of course, to listen to uh, Jung Christiansen, uh, you know, what this ECM drummer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I think uh, I was still on the um, more improvisation uh, music, mainly on ECM. I remember, you know, all the records from Thomas Tanko mm -hmm. with uh, Tony Oxley yeah. or well, John Sarman, yeah. Paul Blaise stuff, uh, you know. So that was my approach uh, to ECM was that one at the beginning. Then, uh, no. Little by little, and little by little, I change. So also the you know the meeting that I have like with Stefano, uh, Battaglia. So we have you know collaboration for many many years, and uh, so we start to listen a lot of stuff. You know, just send me you know ideas. Uh, yeah, you have to check this one. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I, then I, I I move a little bit on the, on this way, yeah. but um, you know that's a, a little bit you know my. Uh, and how was your experience, like uh, mid '80s or late '80s, in the Italian jazz scene? How did you? Who were your the first musicians you started to play with, like back then? Uh, and how was the scene back then in Italy? I mean, like, uh, I'm the first group really that I I start to play and uh, we start to, to work a lot was a, a group of Caviar Girotto. The yeah, yeah, Iris I love Tango. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Iris Tango. So we played for like 20 years <laughs> with oh, that wow. band. We did a lot, a lot, a lot of concerts. 
And uh, the scene in Italy at the time, it was incredible because it was full of clubs. clubs yeah. Everybody was playing and, you know, I, you know, I, I moved, when I moved to Rome in the 93, 94, okay. I was, I think there was like uh, 25 clubs. <laughs> uh, every night is doing concerts. So you just finish your concert, you go back in another one to, to check other guys playing and it was like this. And so it was really a hype period at the time in Italy. Every city had two or three little clubs. So you can just do it, organize short tours, play to Rome, to Florence, and then to Pisa and Milano and Torino and Genoa, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So that's what's really good at the time. Um, then the situation, of course, changed. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Now, really yeah. changed. But uh, I think Italy had a, it still had a you know, great, uh, great musician. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And uh, we have a, a lot of variety of uh, music. We still have a great uh, bebop stuff uh, uh, musician. Then we have an improviser. Then we have, uh, you know, so everything. I helps. think it's, yeah, mostly. Like, it's like here in French, you know, it's, you know, here you can find everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, would like, I would like to say maybe in French, uh, there is more uh, offer about electronics uh, and uh, because also, you know, the tradition they have a come yeah. they have a CRM, so they have many historical places where you can work on uh, electronics music. Yeah. Uh, but for the rest, you know, here you can find a lot of incredible improviser uh, and classical musician, jazz musician, blah blah. So, yeah, so, how, how come you decided to go to Paris then? After well, I, uh, I moved to Paris four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's not that much time because uh, I was, I started to play with French musicians many years ago, you know, like Dominique Pifarelli and mm -hmm. Vincent Courtois, blah, blah. So I did back and forth from Italy to French. And then at a certain point, uh, I was half and a half. And they say, well, I can try, you know, just to see what's going on. And then it doesn't like or if it doesn't work, I come back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, I'm very happy. So I'm um, here. I the the work situation is really good because you are protected. In Italy, we don't have nothing, and uh, in French, uh, you can get uh, you know assistance uh, yeah. from the government. Uh, you can make a project, and the, the government help you to you know uh, to produce your uh, project. And yeah, so you have many options and many help here. And uh, and it's, uh, from my point of view, from what I'm doing, uh, I found more uh, more musician. I'm because uh, all, all, here they have also a big tradition of uh, classical musician yeah. that they can provide to. So you can have uh, you know the chance to find the tuba or violin or harp. You have many instruments, very interesting that it. He provides really well, and you know they are really in touch with the electronic things too. Uh, mm -hmm. So, from for what I did, for what I do is uh, more stimulated in, in a certain way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, and you also you mentioned you know Vincent Courtois and Dominique. I know you yeah. played a lot with those guys and yeah, many, many very, others. Yeah, I'm very close friend with Dominique for many years so yeah, I, love, I love Dominique yeah. yes, he's such yeah. a player I remember the first time we played together and it was him Michel Godard and uh, drummer Dan Terzic and you know when Dominique started improvising on some tunes I was like what <laughs> you know? I was yeah. completely blown away by it. Dominique have this you know yeah. determination of the form the first note is like, pfft, like yeah, train yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too like, it's true, I love him. It's beautiful, yeah. But uh, I, I wanted to ask you regarding Dominique because you also you played with him and Stefano Battaglia together. And uh, how did your story with Stefano begin? I know you, you you guys did like five, six, or seven albums together, many for ECM and some other stuff. And but when did you yeah. guys start playing together? Uh, Stefano was playing with uh, Dominique before because mm -hmm. he did a trio with Paulino Dalla Porta. So I think that was the first uh, meeting between Stefano and Dominique. And then uh, I, I had to do it with Stefano. So yeah. Stefano proposed to invite oh, Dominique. Or... And uh, no, this was 
uh, even before. The first, yeah, it was before. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. I think the record came out after two or three years that we were ah, playing okay. together. Okay. So yeah, so Stefano, I think the first concert we did uh, was in uh, was in in Bologna, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, and so from that we start to to play, you know, together, and uh, so we we did a record also here in French with a quintet with Michel and yeah, Godard I love and that record. Yeah. Atem, so, right? Yeah. Atem, right? Yeah, I love and that. then we did the, the one for ECM and blah blah. So. Uh, I was, uh, uh, so it was, you know, just uh, this uh, Stefano idea at the beginning. So we worked together for, you know, different year. And it was yeah. really good. Yeah. yeah I, I, I love how you guys inter like Pastorale is so beautiful, you know. It's, Thanks. It's so beautiful to also uh, improvise. We, we did one improvised record also, guitar and piano. It, and it was just, with him, it's so easy to play. It's just like. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> You still play with Stefano, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, he, we, we did two records together, and uh, one like compositions and one improvisations. And the one with improvs, it was wow. amazing. We did like two hours of music, you know, just like, wow, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's great. He's such a beautiful mind when it comes to improvising. Yeah. Like, you know, this. Yeah, it's true. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. But, uh, uh, I wanted to ask you about Italian piano players. I have an album of you with Salvatore Bonafede. And, oh, yeah. Uh, like, uh, and there's like this amazing lineup of American musicians, you know, Joe Lovano, Adam Rogers. Yeah, Paul Motion. Uh, Paul Motion and Mark Dresser. And uh, how did that project happen? And how was it like for you to be part of that? Because you're not on all tunes, right? Uh, that's so, what's really strange. Yeah. No, no. It was strange because I did another uh, record with Salvatore. Yeah. It's called, I think, Donna Fugata Donna with Fugata, uh, Rico, yeah. Rava, Rico Rava, Clarence Penn. So he invited me in Rome to, to do this record, to play, you know, add sounds, percussion, blah, blah. Uh, so that was the first record I did with him. Then uh, he organized this, uh, these things in New York. And I also had another um, uh, things to do at the time in New York. So he say, oh, oh you are there. So you can come to uh, some stuff and stuff. And it was strange because uh, the first day I, I arrived in the studio and Paul Motion came and uh, you know, just look at me and say, who is this guy? And I just said, ah, it's a percussion player. He said, I never played with percussion player. <laughs> so it was like, uh oh. So I just say, yeah, don't worry. I will do like, you know, maybe tiny stuff probably. And so then, you know, was uh, like this, but it was a uh, was nice, uh, a nice stuff for me because I, I, for the first time, I met these guys and I saw it playing really live and in the studio and discuss and talk and uh, and it was strange because I remember that was really strange stuff. The first track they did, uh, Paul Motion and um, Mark Dresser. Mark Dresser. Uh, there was a, there was there were problem. I don't know what's going on. It was really strange because bass was playing in a certain way and the drums was playing completely in another yeah, way. They're so really they, like, yeah, strange yeah, combo. Absolutely. <laughs> so we just the, finished to record the first uh, track and uh, then uh, everybody come back into the control room and listen and say, oh, no, 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 it doesn't work. And so I remember that uh, uh, Paul Motion say, okay, just give me five minutes. And then he came back and they recorded all the album in like uh, five hours three hours i don't know like half wow. like this because it just you know <laughs> you know found uh, another way to play to play it was yeah. perfect it yeah. was perfect perfect so it, you know they are they are you no know, top yeah. level of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's work yeah and Paul, Paul Moshang, you see. How, how was he then like to you like since you're a percussion player and uh, actually he i don't think he ever did well, maybe he did, I like think two. he did only once. Away with uh, Carla Blay, I think he was yeah. playing with percussion too. No, the other was really nice with me. It was really nice. We went to dinner to, to the, the two days of the recording. I mean, we stayed together and it was really, really nice person. Yeah. But he was, uh, you know, at the beginning, I was really scared because he yeah. you know, <laughs> was just looking at me and said, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was a nice, nice person, really. Yeah, yeah, he's Absolutely. Such, such, a, such an amazing musician also. And yeah. it, uh, well, I, actually, we have a... Sorry. 
No, no, go on, please. No, talking about piano in Italy, I think we have a very big tradition of piano player because we have a great piano player there. I mean, and, and very different piano player. Yeah. yeah. And then we have Franco D'Andrea, we have uh, Enrico Pieranuzzi, yeah, Thomas yeah. Yeah. We have We are really full Danilo of... Danilo Rea. Uh, like Danilo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Full of uh, incredible piano player. Yeah. Yeah, it's a strong tradition. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Italy. It is. Yeah. yeah, I love so, it. So many musicians. Speaking of piano players, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, uh, I, I played with Paul a lot, McCandless also. And uh, I know you played with Paul, but you also played with John Taylor yeah. on that yeah. record. And, you know, John Taylor, for me, he's God. He's, he was yeah, one of too. the best piano players ever. And uh, For me too. <laughs> how was that experience like for you to play? I mean, I, I know it was uh, Pierluigi Spalducci's group, but... It's such a beautiful lineup with Paul and uh, John. How was that experience like for you playing also Bill Evans's music? I mean, that's yeah. Oh, that was really nice because uh, I mean, Paul and and John Taylor are really fantastic person. Really, yeah, really yeah. beautiful heart, and uh, so it was really really easy. You know, both record we did. Uh, it was just you know get to the studio and uh, and just play. And uh, I think. Pierre Luigi wrote this stuff. I mean, for the first record, then for the B11s, of course, mm -hmm. he just did some arrangement. I mean, they did everybody, all, all the, all we did arrangement, but for the first record, they just wrote these, uh, these yeah. songs, yeah. this tune. And, and uh, it was really, it was really easy because uh, I'm, both of them uh, were like fantastic, you know, very open and uh, warm people. So when you work with those guys, it's, I mean, it's, it's a gift and it's also really uh, easy, you know, because they yeah. really know what they are doing, uh, but they're completely open to to bring everything. So, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. it was really nice. And I, I, I had a, a lot of uh, great uh, um, moment with them, especially with John, you know, because uh, really? both of them, well, both, well, we, we both uh, like wine. <laughs> so, so, you know, after the concert, uh, we went to the hotel and we just, you know, sit and drink. Uh, and uh, and he was a very lovely, lovely, lovely person. Really. Yeah. yeah. So we're just talking about, you know, everything, you know, yeah. music, but, you know, sometimes something else, you know, and it's, uh, it was so nice. It was a really nice person. Yeah, it's like, you know, I mean, he, he you know, he played like in such beautiful records with Kenny Wheeler and all yeah. that, you know, that stuff. It's just like, man, or... Yeah, with Peter Erskine, those trio records, and oh, I was fantastic. Yeah, but, Peter yeah. Erskine, yeah. man, I love the trio. Fantastic records. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's yeah. funny. I, I checked some records that I have of you, of you, and I think you played almost with all the Oregon lineup. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you, play, uh, you yeah. played with Paulino. No? I mean, Paulino is now Oregon, uh, and you I played, played with Paul, Paul. I played with Ralph. Yeah, yeah, Ralph. Too. And uh, like, uh, how was your? We started also with uh, talking about Ralph a little. You know, he's again one of my heroes and uh, everyone, every guitarist's hero, I think, not only guitarists, but how was your experience? I know you played with Javier Girotta with him and, uh, yeah. and Ralph. Uh, how was the uh, line uh, playing with him? You know, he's like a piano player on guitar. Ralph, right? uh, 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 this is another, that's another story because uh, uh, I was living, at, uh, when I was living in Rome, uh, one of my you know, best friend is Maria Pia De Pito. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We are really friends from long, 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 long really, time. Uh, and we were living just together, you know, like 200 meters, one from each other. So every 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 evening she went to my house to eat and I was in her house to eat too. And uh, she was playing with Ralph at the time. So Ralph moved uh, in Rome to live mm -hmm. uh, and he was living in the same, you know, really neighbor. close to yeah. neighbor. So we start to, to meet every day all together and, you know, but not every day, but, you know, many times. So we have a dinner, we have a Christmas together, we uh -huh. have you know, all this kind of stuff. So, so that's why I started, you know, my, my uh, friend relation with Ralph uh, and, uh, and his wife with Mariela. And it was really nice. It was really, you know, he's a, he's a fantastic person too. Yeah. And then um, Javier started to work with him. Like uh, I think a duo was the first things they did. Uh, I mean, I did not, oh, wow. Yeah, I think uh, they started playing a duo, oh, wow. and uh, and then 
it invite uh, Ralph in this project with the, no, with the quartet. Yeah. So we start to, and we did one well records and then, and then we did just, you know, some concert. Uh, I think we last, what we did was one year ago in Pescara. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. But, so I don't have that, you know, I didn't, I didn't do too much concert with him. So, uh, and plus the music was, you know, everything was very written and, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah arranged and everything uh but it's uh you know it's uh a beautiful it's, it's, it's beautiful yeah yeah it's, uh, all, all you do is magic it's a uh, funny or fantastic and uh wow yeah yeah, yeah incredible it, yeah yeah it's an incredible musician absolutely absolutely yeah. and it's fantastic composer and uh, he plays beautiful piano piano and yeah, guitar, yeah. you know everything Mon in monster fantastic. player yeah. yeah, yeah. You you've done so much work with so many people. I, I love that. But I, I wanted to ask you also. But I watched the other day on YouTube your solo playing you did from Radio France, uh, yeah. some recording, and it's so nice to see you playing solo because it's like a big show, you know, with all the metronomes and tapes <laughs> and computers and uh, and I wanted to ask you how do you approach a solo solo concert or performance, you know, for drums, percussion and electronics. How is your um, timeline there? Do, do you like write down the concept where you will go or you just kind of start like, what's the idea when playing solo for you? Uh, I, okay, uh, the one you saw one, the, the one in Radio France, mm -hmm. it was a, a little bit more organized because I have short time and we, because after me there was a big orchestra so you can uh -huh. see all the instruments behind yeah. me. There was my <laughs> so uh, in, the, in in that in that uh, situation because there was a uh, a video and everything. So I start to it wasn't that much improvised. Meaning that I have you know some construction and I, I just move it because I have to play like thirty minutes and that's it. So um, it was a little bit more organized. Uh, now I. Start again, like I, I think, uh, yeah, this this year I start again to do a solo, mm -hmm. and I do it completely different. It's meaning that I'm I'm really improvising now. I just go, come up on stage. I have you know uh, my uh, idea of construction, but I changing every time, and because I'm changing also uh, a lot in a if I play in an open air in a small yeah. place and. So everything is changing now, and uh, I keep everything everything open, and I'm um, I'm start to 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 work again on this uh, on this project because I, I really like to play solo. Yeah, uh -huh. really. Yeah, yeah, I like a lot. So you know, some I like to do you know during the year some spots you know to have you know I just did like four or five uh, this last month, and uh, it was really nice. I like it really because uh, I have you know, all this freedom to. To, to do what to I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, and, I, and uh, it's very, I, I like, so I, I want to work uh, really, and now I'm thinking to maybe the end of this year or the beginning of the last year to do just uh, vinyl stuff, you know, very easy, just recording live 35 minutes and uh, maybe doing a video, I don't know. Oh, well, but super. My very improvised stuff. Yeah, yeah. okay, interesting, yeah. Um, it's, it would would be interesting to see you like playing com more compo compositions also within this specter, like yeah, both maybe. like one improvised and one composed. Like I'm really yeah. curious how that would sound also. Um, uh, I I start also to work on the uh, composer uh, material from uh, mm, contemporary music. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, you yeah. know, just maybe pieces for snare drum and electronics. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. But uh, it took me a lot of time. So yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. That's another, you know, little project that maybe one day, you know, but yeah, yeah. that's really, you know, need a, a lot of time to work. To prepare. To, you know, yeah. to prepare. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mikhail, I just wanted to ask you also this, like speaking of drums, uh, how did your story with Ingar Zak begin? Because it's uh, rare to see two, I mean, yeah, drums, because you mix everything, percussions and drums together, but uh, it, it's beautiful to see that, you know, there's also some videos on YouTube, like how did your story with him begin and where did the idea come from to do that? Uh, uh, we just, um, 
met uh, once, I don't remember where, and uh, I was to know him for his work with uh, Dallas Art. Uh, and uh, it was, he was know me for uh, things with diving and other yeah. stuff. And uh, so we decided to, to, to start to collaborate it. We just did, we just finished the new album. It's come out uh, in 15 days, the end of oh, September. Wow. Really? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, so we start to organize the tour. And uh, the situation is changing now. I mean, did, 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 I, I probably there is only one video, and it was the first concert we did. So, oh, it was wow. really, yeah. And now everything is changed because uh, we just use two snare drum and we share the bass drum. So, we oh, are really, really, oh, wow. Yeah, that's it. And uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with this project. And uh, I, I hope and I think Inga too. So yeah, yeah. we we want to 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 kick it because it's, it's I, we play the same instrument, uh, but we have two different conception. That's what I like because we have two different uh, conception of electronic use. He didn't use too much electronics. He used a speaker yeah. on the on the skin and uh, one iPad. So it's very easy stuff. But it's I think it's fit and it's worked yeah. really well with the sound that I use and. Uh, then what I, what I really love from uh, Inga, from uh, Yambanga, from Aydin, from all these guys that I work with them, is the, how they can manage the, the, the silence. And it's, yeah. for me, it's, a, it's still a sort of mystery, you know, sometimes because they have this uh, approach to the silence and it is unbelievable. Yeah. Really. It's like this and, ego, uh, egoless. Uh, 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 told uh, Ivan about this, you know, if he's always serving the music, it's not about, you know, I have to play 6,000 notes and, and he can, he could, of course, but yeah, it's always like, okay, I'm there. Like, yeah, yeah, that? so, it's... yeah, yeah, that's the conversation that they have and uh, I think it's, it's fantastic and about, you know, of course, because you are a musician, so, you know, how, how difficult it is to manage the science. Yeah. It's a uh, wow, it's incredible, you know. The you know the the weight that the sound, the silence have in a composition or in, in, yeah. a, in a performance. And uh so I that's why I really I really love to work with those guys because they have this fantastic conception of uh, and uh oh. so it, it, it's a it's a I'm, I'm really happy with this project yeah with uh, with the Ingara and uh, or maybe also with Ivan so I found these guys uh, that I really, I, I, I like to share, you know, also here in French, I like to change things, uh, try different, you know, yeah. uh, and I, I really like to, to, to move from uh, one idea to another. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I love that too. Yeah. It's, so, it's important to keep active. And, yeah. yeah, I have the chance to find this fantastic musician. Uh, so it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Cool, Mikel. <laughs> Doctor Jazz.